now we are ready for our crystallographic restriction theorem which i said is one of the most beautiful and important theorem of this course what does this theorem say this theorem says that in crystals only one two three four and six i am not making any mistake five is missing and one bar two bar three bar four bar and six bar axes can be present simplifies our life dramatically otherwise there is no limit on n n goes from infinity if there are a finite object you can have five fold symmetry think of a regular pentagon five fold symmetry in the model making you made icosahedron has five bar symmetry so all these symmetries five fold six fold seven fold eight fold a regular octagon eight fold axis but you can't arrange a crystal to have eight fold symmetry it will not be there so in crystals only these these 10 possible axes can be there five fold is not there five bar is not there how do we prove this the matrix proof is very very simple it will if you have understood the matrix method now the proof will be proof will almost appear to be trivial so let's do the matrix proof why why this is so why is this restriction is coming what is special about crystal which is not there in a regular octagon octag sorry point proof has to exist point proof the proof has to exist so five fold is a point group five fold axis is a point group there are five rotations if you if you consider five fold axis five is a point group point group consisting of 0 degree 72 degree 144 degree after that 216 degree Eighty-eight degree. These rotations will bring pentagon into self-coincidence. If we join the centroid of the pentagon to the vertices, these are the seventy-two degree. One times seventy-two degree, two times seventy-two degree, three times, four times, and finally five times. So these five elements, zero. 2 pi by 5 um 2 2 pi by 5 3 2 pi by 5 and 4 2 pi by 5 so these represent the symmetry operation so it's a point group and it leaves one point of the pentagon unchanged the centroid of the pentagon unchanged so it's a point group proper point group it's not that five fold axis will not give you a point group it does give you a point group but it gives you a point group incompatible with crystal crystal where is that in- incompatibility coming from one thing which is not there in the finite object that nothing is repeating there is no unit cell there is only one object so if there is only one object it can have arbitrary symmetry 
but as soon as you demand that object should repeat at equal intervals in three directions that repetition that translational symmetry is actually what is putting this restriction. So, this restriction comes from the fact that only these symmetries compatible with translational symmetry of the crystal. which is the defining symmetry of the crystal. Crystal need not have any two fold, three fold, four fold symmetry. If it is a crystal, one symmetry which is guaranteed for it to have is that it should be translationally periodic. How we define crystal? We did not say a crystal which has a four fold symmetry. We say a crystal should be a translationally periodic arrangement of atoms. When we brought in translational periodicity, essentially we are demanding that it is having translational symmetry. So, only these symmetry rotations, only these 10 symmetry rotations are compatible with translational symmetry. Why is that? So, let us look at that. Since since you have a crystal, since you have a crystal and since you have a translational periodicity and you have a choice to select some crystallographic coordinate system, which will be some lattice translation. suppose this. So, this is one possible basis vector. You can have what is the difference between the blue basis and the red basis? Blue is primitive. red is non primitive. What is the difference in the coordinates which these bases will give to the different points? For example, this point this point will have coordinates what in the blue system minus 1 suppose if this is my a this is my b and this is my a prime and this is my b prime sorry this is my a prime and this is my b prime so in the blue system it is minus 1 1 in the red system Uh, will primitive ever give you a fractional coordinates? That is the beauty or that is the advantage or that is the power or that is the excellence of a primitive system. Primitive assures you that all lattice points will have integer coordinates.
integer or sometimes it is called integral, but it has nothing to do with the definite or indefinite integral. Integral here is adjective of integer. So, now let us write suppose suppose w is the rotation matrix. matrix representing no let w be let w be a matrix representing a rotation in a primitive basis So, you have some coordinates, some starting coordinate of some lattice point x, y, z, coordinates of the rotated point. Remember, we decided that not to write prime for rotation, but the tilde. So, initial, because if it has a rotation, suppose this was a rotation axis. Suppose this is some sort of rotation axis, then it will rotate some lattice point to some other lattice point. So, this lattice point is being mapped to that, this lattice point is what I am calling x, y, z. After rotation, I am calling it x tilde, y tilde, z tilde, and the matrix is doing that transformation for me. So, the matrix is W. and my basis is primitive basis. In the primitive basis, what is x, y, z? What is the form of x, y, z? Integers. So, each x, y and z are integers. After rotation, the new lattice vector which you get is also being represented in the primitive basis. So, what will be the form of these integers? Now, if you have a matrix which on multiplication gives you from an integer column vector to another integer column vector always, what will be the form of w? So, let us do it one by one. Any rotation, no symmetry rotation because it takes a lattice point to another lattice point. So, this is also a lattice that that is why they are integers. Hmm? So, this is a lattice point, this is a lattice point, and this is a transformed lattice point, a rotated lattice point. and this is the symmetry rotation. The rotation will act on all, all vectors, all lattice point. One of the lattice point has to be 1 0 0, end of the a vector, the first basis vector. Hmm? 1 0 0 multiplied by w will give you what? that is the first column. Any matrix, if you multiply by 1 0 0, you pick out the first column. 1 0 0 was integer, what do you say about w 1 1, w 2 1, w 3 1? 
each of W11, W11 is an integer, W21 is an integer, W31 is an integer. If they were not, then our this uh, relationship that a lattice point goes to lattice point and in primitive basis they are integers will be violated. So, if this W is a symmetry rotation and I am working in a primitive basis, then W11, W21 and W31 have to be integers. If I multiply by 0, 1, 0, what will I get? The second column and what will we claim or what we will decide about these numbers? In integer. So, all elements of this matrix integers. So, this matrix itself is an integral matrix. So, any symmetry rotation represented in primitive basis is an integral matrix. integral matrix means all w i j for all values of i and j they are integers. If that is true and if this is representing a rotation, what can we say about the trace? but 2 cos theta plus 1 should be integer. It is an amazing result, just think about it. 2 cos theta plus 1 cos theta is a fraction and theta is an arbitrary angle rotation angle with an arbitrary rotation angle theta cosine can have any value, I am multiplying it by 2 adding 1. So, it can have any arbitrary value, but if this theta is part of rotational symmetry of a crystal, then only those thetas will be allowed for which 2 cos theta plus 1 is integer. We have come to this very, very side. This is what is you are already seeing that the translational symmetry is restricting theta. It is not letting you have arbitrary theta because arbitrary theta will give you non integer. But if it is part of crystal symmetry, our analysis demands that 2 cos theta plus 1 has to be an integer. What will be the maximum integer for 2 cos theta plus 1? what will be the minimum value of n so what are the all possible integers n minus 1 0 1 2 3 what were the axes we are saying that are allowed 1 fold, 2 fold, 3 fold, 4 fold and 6 fold, 5, 5 different axes, 5 different integers between minus 1 and 3.
beautiful result you can just now simply work out that what do these ends stand for so n is equal to minus 1 2 cos theta plus 1 is equal to minus 1 2 cos theta is equal to minus 2 cos theta is equal to minus 1 theta is equal to 180 degree 180 degree rotation two fold axis so we are happy two fold axis is allowed for a crystal any existence of n is equal to minus 1 is telling us that two fold axis is allowed for a crystal n is equal to 0 the main thing is done the rest is just algebra and identify what these numbers are representing in terms of the angle cos theta is minus half theta is 120 degree fold three fold n is equal to 1 2 cos theta is 0 theta is 90 degree Finally, n is equal to 2, no, not finally, n is equal to 3, we have to go up to n is equal to 3, 2 cos theta plus 1 is equal to 2, cos theta is equal to half, theta is equal to 60 degree, 6, 4. we have exhausted everything what will 3 give so n is equal to 3 2 cos theta plus 1 is equal to 3 cos theta is equal to 1 theta is equal to 0 degree which is same as 360 degree which is no symmetry but we do not like to be negative so we say we have one fold symmetry saying one fold symmetry is saying that there is no symmetry any any arbitrary any odd object if rotated by 360 degree or if not rotated at all by 0 degree it will be in self coincidence so symmetry is not required for that but if there is no symmetry we take a positive attitude to life and say it has one fold symmetry so thank you very much